Blumenthal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ira Blumenthal. <laughs> You know, there's a battle outside, and it's raging. It'll soon shake your windows and, and rattle your walls. Ah, the times, they are changing. When folky futurist, folky futurist Bob Dylan wrote those lines, he also added, the line it is drawn, the curse it is cast. The first one now might later be last. Ah, the times, they are changing. So ignore change, you die. React to change, you survive. Here is the big one. Here is the one that's critically important. The third strategy, and this is what you need to think about, because marketing is about innovation. Marketing is about vision. Marketing is about taking a shot. Marketing is about maybe thinking outside the box occasionally with all kinds of challenges you have as a telco marketing professional. Make other changes. How about Harley Davidson? Harley Davidson, almost bankrupt turned around and reinvented themselves. Here's what I want you to do. Everybody, put your hands out in front of you like this. Two hands out in front of you, okay? When I say three, I want you to make noise as if you are riding on a motorcycle made in Japan. Made in Japan. One, two, three. Okay, now, let's put our hands on the hog. Come on, put your hands up there. Up, come on, come on, put the hands on the hog. Let's go, back table, let's go, come on, come on. Okay, when I say three, one, Harley Davidson. One, two, three. Boom, boom. Harley-Davidson, from a marketing standpoint, and you are marketing professionals, from a marketing standpoint, was perceived at one point as you cannot ride one without body piercing and tattoos. We'll protect Mick Jagger. Remember the old Hesley Angels at the, the Rolling Stones concerts, etc. 17% of Harley owners today are female and growing. And oh, by the way, it has become a lifestyle vehicle from a marketing standpoint. It's okay. Doctors, lawyers, marketing professionals in the telco world, it's okay to have a Harley. One ship sails east, one ship sails west, as the very same breezes blow. It's the set of the sail, not the gale, not the wind, not the winds of change. It's the set of the sail that bids those ships where to go. You see, the same winds of change are affecting every one of you in every one of your functional areas, in every one of your divisions and departments, and every one of your clients. It's how you set the sail that defines the ultimate direction. But I never taught them the most important rule in basketball and the most important rule in your business. You cannot score unless you shoot. And then it dawns on me, these kids lose seven games straight while I'm in town. I leave, they win. So Eric, what did Coach Paul, my neighbor, my assistant coach, what did Coach Paul do to fire up the team? Oh, Dad, Coach Paul got the flu. Mom, coach the team. <laughs> We've done a lot of work over the years for a little company in Bentonville, Arkansas called Walmart. No longer are they walking the halls in Arkansas talking about retail, they are talking about e-tail. It's no longer brick and mortar, it's click and mortar. Now I'm not saying that's good, and I'm not saying that's bad, I'm saying it's real. We need to in some way, shape, or form develop a plan for it. I know that each and every one of you ascribe to a business plan, perhaps a marketing plan, perhaps a long-term plan perhaps a contingency plan. You also need to have a plan that is defined by the specific changes that we all know will continue to unfurl in our world and what you plan on doing about it, how you plan on getting ahead of it. A plan that absolutely focuses on dealing with change. The most important constant in our world, you've heard it a million times, you've heard it since you were a kid, change, 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 it's not new, but oh by the way, if we don't deal with it, we will, in fact, find ourselves falling short in some way, shape, or form, like the Eastern Airlines, and like the Howard Johnsons, and like the Sambos, and, and like the Sankas, and I can go on, okay, with brands that, that no longer exist. We are in a branded world. We are in a branded world. Years ago, I had a Toshiba copy machine in my office, and I used to ask my assistant to shoot me a Xerox. Now, I'm not saying it's good, and I'm not saying it's bad, but we're in a branded world. And oh, by the way, a corporate and also personal branded world. As a corporation, as a telco, you want to be trusted. Don't you? You want to be trusted. Well, guess what? That's part of branding. You've got to figure out the right imagery and the right messaging and the right words. By the same token, you represent your telco. And personally, you've got to manage brand you. 
Why? Because you represent your organization. The way you act, the way you speak, where you go, how you work, your essence is all going to be reflected upon the organization you work with. So concurrently to building your brand, building your telco's brand, you've got to build your own personal brand and be respected and, and be believed. You see, in marketing, we have these terms called identity and equity and essence and image. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Brand identity, brand image. Changing rapidly, folks. Brand identity is when you develop what you or your company wants to be known for. Brand identity is your strategy. This is the snapshot on me. This is the snapshot on my organization, on the services I provide. This is the snapshot on what I believe people see me as. That's my personal brand identity. Then there's brand image. What's brand image? Anyone? That's the way they see you. Brand identity versus brand image. It's nice for you to think that you work very hard to make your telco looked upon as being innovative, visionary, caring, communicative, whatever it is. But that's fine. You, that's your brand identity. You've got to step outside yourself. Henry David Thoreau said, could a greater miracle take place than to look through another's eyes for an instant? How do your constituents look upon you? They're always gouging. They're always raising their prices. They're inconsistent. I have to wait on the phone for hours to get a representative. I mean, on and on. Brand identity. Now, an exercise I'd throw at you personally and professionally is write down eight or ten things you believe define your identity. If it's personal, it could be caring, empathetic, witty, cerebral, right? Now go to eight or ten friends, relatives, and say, look, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Write down ten words you think about when you think of me, or you think of my company, or you think of my product. And folks, if you put witty and they put dull, if you put smart and they put stupid, if you put cerebral and they said, yeah, what, you know, whatever, you've got what we call a brand disconnect. And whether the brand disconnect is about your company, your services, or you personally with managing your own brand, that's critically important. So I'll give you one quick story. Move on and get to closure. I am staying at the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. I went to check in. And the manager, or the uh, desk clerk said, Mr. Blumenthal, I've got some good news and bad news. The good news, the bad news is we're out of rooms. The good news is we do have one room available for you if you want it. It's the bridal suite. <laughs> okay, I take the bridal suite. I go upstairs and I find two floors, spiral staircase, heart-shaped bed, chocolate-covered strawberry. I called Kim up and I said, get on a plane. She had something silly to take care of like the children. So in any event... <laughs> So I'm, I go down to the health club and I work out, and now I come back to my bridal suite. And I, you know, I take a shower and I put on a pair of shorts, okay, and I collapse on the bed without a shirt. And I look up! <laughs> oh my God. That can't be me. My brand identity was my head on Lou Ferrigno's body. I looked up, I called my wife up, I mean, I called the manager first and said, I, I need to get out of this room. He said, why? I said, I cannot sleep with that guy. <laughs> he said, I'm sorry. See, the hero Caesars. So I called Kim up and I said, I know you know I'm in Las Vegas. I know you know I'm in the bridal suite. But I have to ask you a question. What do I look like with my shirt off? And she responded with, what are you doing? <laughs> But that's a clear example of brand identity versus brand image. Now, when you go back, here's one thing you could do Wednesday morning, 9 a.m., is turn around and list those five or six or eight postulates that you believe your telco stands for, what your brand stands for. Then go out and talk to folks and ask them what they believe you stand for. You talk about optimism, folks. This guy, at 94 years old, married his 19-year-old secretary. <laughs> that, no, no, no. That's not the optimism. Don't get too excited yet. That's not the optimism. They bought a house next to an elementary school. That's optimism. <laughs> How many of you believe in business planning? You realize what kind of business plan you've got to have to go from 2,900 to 53. I'm talking, you're talking quantum leap, folks. You're talking about strategy, vision, understanding that, I mean, can, it's incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of collaboration. Collaborative advantage will lead to competitive advantage. Competitive advantage through collaboration, through sharing. 
call it searching for synergies or finding symbiotic relationships or partnering or joint ventures or joint adventures, we are seeing both in the private sector and the public sector more focus on folks, organizations getting together and collaborating. I believe strategic alliance is the wave of the future. It's the three most important benefits of a strategic alliance are value, efficiency, and growth. If you enter into collaboration, if you search for synergies and symbiotic relationships and partner and joint venture and build an alliance, all parties must receive value, all parties must be more efficient in what they do, and ultimately grow. Well, I came out here quoting 20th century philosopher Bob Dylan. In closing, I want to offer something, something to you that I believe is perhaps my most important message for you as it relates to dealing with change. Change is inevitable, growth is optional. You might think the message strange because it's real simple. Don't grow old. Don't grow old. That's a silly bit of advice from a counselor, from a consultant. What, what do you mean by that? You all know 25-year-olds that act like 75. You all know 75-year-olds that have the spirit and the passion what's missing in our world today, folks. Passion of a 25-year-old. Your kids create games. They invent rules to those games. If you want to continue growing forward in a time of incredible change, you've got to be young at heart, young at mind, constantly embrace learning. So in the words, in the words of 20th century philosopher Bob Dylan, let me close with, may your hands always be busy and may your feet always be swift May you have a strong foundation as these winds of change shift. May your heart always be joyful, and, and may your song always be sung. And may you stay forever young. Forever young, forever young. May you stay forever young. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May you stay.